Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dixon and today I'm going to be talking about how the Me Too movement has affected the mentoring of women in the work space. So if you don't know what the Me Too movement is, it's this movement where women who have been oppressed in the workplace and have, take, have been taken advantage of by some high executive men and maybe ask them to uh, give up their or rather have sex with them so that they can get a leg up in the organization so women found a way to use social media to say me too this person did this to me me too this person did this to me so it has turned into a very it started off i won't say it started off uh, some people used it to rather bring into the limelight the people who oppressed them in the past whereas most ladies took it to the extreme and started accusing people who just maybe touched them and they say me too this person sexually arrested me nobody will hear the side of the guy they will just take the woman's word for gospel and they'll be like no we don't need to hear you you are gone even some people who more or less like okay let me mentor this lady and help her Maybe he just looked at her in an awkward way one time. They'll say, me too. He did this to me. So the whole movement was abused. Abused to the point where popular people, celebrities were now like, nah, if there is no camera in the room, I will not stay with a lady. And uh, businessmen were like, if it's not in the open, I'm not ready to have any meeting with any lady so that she cannot come and accuse me in the future. So... These ladies will be talking about the Me Too, and I also will be giving my own thoughts. Get ready, gang. My favorites are here. Listen to this. A side result, an unintended consequence of the Me Too movement has popped up. Male executives and managers, some, are now saying they are afraid to work with and mentor female colleagues in the workplace. So we're trying to find out, is it too hard to see the difference between mentoring and harassment? Joining me now to discuss Tiffany. It's not too hard, but the fact that the woman's voice will have more weight than the man, there is absolutely no need for me to take the risk. If I have seen a friend of mine enter into problems after mentoring a lady. Defu, founder and CEO of The Crew and author of Drop the Ball, and Shelly Zala, CEO of The Female Quotient. Tiffany, I turn to you first. So men who are making this argument, well, suddenly now I, I could be accused of harassment. I can't mentor women anymore. And we first heard this pop up from Wall Street. Bloomberg had an article. I took issue with it because I can't find any evidence where there was ever any extraordinary mentoring on Wall Street. We've never had a female CEO of a bank. So is this just an excuse? So here's the thing. I want to talk to all the men out there who have this concern. I want to say that I feel empathy. I understand. You're concerned that you're walking on eggshells. You feel vulnerable in the workplace. You're concerned that your words or your behavior might be misinterpreted as being something other than who you are. We don't know what the new welcome, rules of the road are. Welcome to the world of being a woman or a person of color or a member of the LGBT community or a person with disabilities in the world. I don't understand anything she I understand her, but it makes no sense. She's not addressing the point. The reason people don't want to or rather men don't want to mentor the ladies is because they don't want to be accused. You're not addressing that point. Or maybe I missed it. Let me go back. Or your behavior might be misinterpreted as being something other than who you are. We don't know. So she's saying men are afraid because they are only scared about being misinterpreted so who is doing the misinterpretation is it not the lady the same lady he's trying to help if she misinterprets his gesture or his tone or his command and she accuses him of sexual harassment he will be in trouble imagine you and your lady colleague winning a, a good contract and you go out for a drink and you got drunk or you don't even get drunk and you take her home and she feels bad and she just goes off the rail. There was this, uh, what they call it, uh, an actor, Aziz Ansari. He went, he had a date with a lady. I think they also had sex. And on coming back, or rather on finishing their whole situation, she was not happy with the sex. 
and she accused him of of rape of uh, is he rape or she just accused him of uh, sexual ass assault. This guy entered trouble, as in nobody wanted to listen to his own side of the story. They put this guy through hell, and in the end, even as he was able to prove that there was nothing harmful in our whole um, interaction together. Whenever they interviewed this guy, it was as if he is a criminal. And men look at that and you are like, oh, she can just ruin my life. If I've been working for 15 years, she can just say, I did X on Twitter and I am done. That's all. Okay, the possibility of her saying I'm a rapist and rather the, the, the weight of me trying to be a good ambassador and she having the chance to accuse me someday or me just saying no and doing everything in the open so that they cannot more or less harass me in the future which one a rational person will pick the possibility of not being accused in the future or the possibility of being accused in the future or even in the near future and she's here telling us that uh, uh, misinterpretation Nonsense. The new Welcome. Rules of the road are. Welcome to the world of being a woman or a person of color or a member of the LGBT community or a person with disabilities in the workplace. So who misinterprets women or LGBTQ or people with disabilities? Ha, she's just conflating two different arguments together. It's annoying. That is part of the experience, having to take a risk in showing up. You're concerned that you may... You only take risks if there is benefits. If there is no benefit to your risk taking, it is stupid to take it. It's more or less, it's not stupid. It is either charity or it is stupid. If charity in a way that you are doing it will end up bringing disgrace to you and there is another way to do it, I will definitely pick the other way to do it. Another better way to do it be labeled as a creep because you compliment me on my beautiful dress you know what sometimes i'm labeled as the b word because i smile too much i think that we need to take if i'm going to be called a creep for calling your dress beautiful i'll just not call your dress beautiful i'm not going to take that risk this new experience that men are feeling in the workplace and actually channel it into something really positive which is why don't you work on creating a more inclusive culture and taking all of your frustration directing it at the men who are making you look really bad the bad apples and not punish women in the workplace because quite frankly your whole enterprise is going to crumble if you don't figure out how to leverage and harness the ingenuity and creativity and talent of the women this is just word salad. It makes no sense. Well, I take the other side of the coin with me. You and I are both women who have been mentored by men. We have spent our careers uh, with men, having lots of close personal social relationships. And many, many times people have said, well, how did she get there? Why is he bringing her? So there's not no truth to it. Listen, I think the biggest issue today is we're living in a, a climate of hypersensitivity, microsensitivity. Men are afraid to do and say the wrong thing in today's post-movement era, which is a big, big issue. And look at us. There's so few female leaders. Leaders are predominantly men. And we need leaders to be our mentors. And if leaders, which are predominantly men, are afraid to be with women alone, we have a big issue women have an issue not the men the men are fine they just say no we don't want to put ourselves at risk we have a, a really big issue three and a half times more men say today that they will not go alone with a woman for dinner uh -huh. five times more likely men not wanting to travel with women this is a and their wives will thank god for that a big problem. When we first heard this from Mike Pence, we laughed at it. We said it was absurd. And now if we're actually hearing this from business people, I am worried. You heard it from Mike Pence and you laughed at him. But you didn't ask yourself the question, did it work? Yes, it worked. Who has accused him of calling her um, beautiful and trying to use his power to uh, make them do what he wants? Nobody. If that policy works for him, the vice president or the former vice president of the United States, it sure as well will work for any man who has worked his, his life out to get to where he is. 
I'm not saying it's a bad thing to mentor a lady. If you have a chance, a chance to mentor a lady, please do. Please mentor the lady. But if it's going to get you to a point where it's going to put an opportunity or a bull's eye on your back where it can be used against you later on, just it's not worth it. It's not worth putting yourself at risk just because you want to increase the female quota in the workspace. Just save yourself all that headache. Let a weak man do that wahala. A man without responsibilities, families, and uh, involvement. Well, here's the thing. There's lots of ways that the current system, as it was, was not allowing opportunities for women, for people of color, for people in the workplace to advance, because oftentimes when you choose a mentor, you choose someone who's like yourself. I think that this can present all kinds of opportunities for opening up the playing field to let more people get the kind of leadership development and exposure and insight and advice that they need. And the reason why guys will more or less be comfortable mentoring other guys is, as a, as a man, if I'm mentoring another man, I can I can make some harmful joke that will not lead to anything. But I can't do that with a lady. When we hit a very good celebration, I can I can slap him on the back and say, "Nice one." If I do that to a lady, I'm going to jail. <laughs> Imagine shaking your guy. Yes, we did it. Go and shake a lady. You are in trouble, and you expect me to take this this. I, rather to abandon this experience that I can have with a guy and go and do it with a lady and I'll be like, yeah, we won. I can't touch you or else I'll be in trouble. I have to check everything I say. It's not easy. We keep asking men to do X, to do Y, to do Z. What are we asking the ladies to do? Nothing. I'm not saying don't call out your the person who tried to harass you. But if you have so many things, protecting you to the point where you can put a man in trouble. You should not expect many men to be rushing towards the potential of being cancelled or destroyed. I'm not taking, I'm not truly taking any side here, although I am, to be honest. I'm leaning towards protecting the man. The same way I would advise the lady to lean towards protecting themselves. But we should not say protect yourself uh, as a lady protect yourself as a man but please expose yourself small so that we can benefit it won't work that way as long as you want security you have it but you cannot ask for security and a pass i hope i'm not stating something stupid right now i'll watch this video later on but that's how i am interpreting this i don't think i need to go too much into the video but let's see Need. You don't have to have, if you're not going to have a dinner or a closed door meeting with a woman, how about you not have it with the young men either? How about you choose three or four or five up and coming people in your industry? How about you have a group lunch, right? Where you give your insight, you encourage them to then peer coach one another and form a crew so that they can support one another there. I think there are all kinds of. The reasons you have private meetings is because you want to keep whatever you are saying private. So if you want to have private meeting and you make it a group, then there is no point in a private meeting. i rather just have that private meeting with someone who cannot accuse me of rape. That's what I'm saying. Shikina, the way you solve this is when a woman accuses a man of rape, there has to be evidence. If there is no evidence, then there is no point in me even putting my neck on the line. Is the reason why the court system works because someone cannot just come. He did something to me. Believe me because I am X. If that was the case, then we'll be in trouble. Although the court systems are not perfect, especially here in Nigeria, it's stupid. The rich people always win. The poor person doesn't even stand a chance in court. Rather, the people in power will always win. So we cannot allow that to seep into the workplace. So the only way men have to protect themselves is to say, I just don't want to be part of it. And you are now saying his only line of defense that he should not take it. It's selfish, to be honest. 
ways in which we really need to think about how we advance talent, how we support people, that opens up the playing field for everybody as opposed to being more exclusionary. We don't want to go in that direction. In a formal sense, that will be fantastic, but it is also those informal connections that really make a huge difference in people's careers. And do we run the risk right now of losing that while the rules of engagement are so unclear? Well, I think that's why it's time to rewrite the rules. I think it's time but who's to... going to rewrite them and then who's going to tell us what they are? We keep rewriting the rules, rewriting the rules, rewriting the rules. Where is the rules ever going to remain the rules? I don't know. Anyhow, if you want to watch the rest of the video, I'll leave the video link down below. And maybe you do not agree with me. Maybe I'm just saying things that don't make sense to you. You will be the judge and you, you ask yourself, if you are a lady and you feel so invested in what they are saying and you feel like, I am not being objective. I will want you to do a thought experiment with me. If it's your child, your son, that will be in the shoe of, should I take the risk and mentor a lady and she can accuse me of rape later? Or should I just mind my own business and grow my own JJ? Uh, JJ means gradually. Which one will you pick for your son? And if your answer is the first one, then I'll say, okay, yes, you are being. You are being objective or being fair or your critique against me is being fair. But if your answer is the second one, then you should also extend that empathy to other men. If you can extend it to your son, you should extend it to other men and not just use your bias of, I am a lady, I have to protect the ladies, regardless of what happened to the men. Remember, we are half of the population of the world also. So don't go and be against us. The same way we cannot really be against you. We need each other to survive. Anyhow, that's it for this video. Please like this video if you like it. If you don't like it, please go down to the comments and blast me. Tell me why you don't like the video. I will read it. Share the video to your friends so that they can also give their own insight and also enjoy. Enjoy the wonderful experience you just enjoyed. And subscribe to help the channel. These are the only three things I ask for. Like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you guys and girls later. And this is Dixon signing out. Bye-bye.